Unfortunately, we're back to talking about wars. But fortunately, this time is not between humans. It's between ants. The Ant World War has been going on for hundreds of millions of years, and a peace treaty has not been signed yet. Ants don't only have a culture of having wars between each other, they have another habit that shows they have no mercy. There are a lot of different types of ants that have slaves. We don't know how they started slavery, or how they realize that they can do this. The most merciless slaver ant is called the polyurgus, and sometimes it's referred to as the Amazon ant. Scientists that study this type of ant could not believe what type of animal this is. They realize that polyurgus has had slaves for such a long time that the polyurgus ant itself doesn't know how to take care of itself whatsoever. They don't work, they don't build anything, they don't even look for food because the slaves do everything for them. It's interesting to know that 80 to 90% of a polyurgus ant colony is slaves. Just imagine 90 slaves, 9 polyurgus ants, and 1 queen. But allow us to talk about a different type of ant. The Formica ant. The Formica ant colony is very active and each of them are doing their job while the queen is making babies. They have a very chill life and they're not looking for trouble. It's good to know that Formicas are very good for farmlands and that is why farmers love Formica ants around their land because they're an anti-parasite type ant. Either way, the Formica colony is set up and it's working well, but they don't realize that a single lone polyurgus ant is watching their ant colony. The name of a lone ant that goes looking for colonies to attack is called a scout, and this was the scout that was checking out the colony. The scout basically takes pictures of the colony and remembers everything and rushes back to the clan. When the scout gets back to the colony, he or she releases a type of smell that screams, I have found treasure and you need to follow me to this place. They very quickly get the army ready and start heading towards the other colony. The Formica ants are busy doing their job but they're not paying attention on what is going on. The distance between ant colonies is very short less than 150 meters. But even though it's not far at all, it takes half a day for these ants to march that way. Formica ants are not good warriors whatsoever. Their only self-defense mechanism is that they release a type of acid that's supposed to scare the opponent. But the polyergus ants are not scared of this liquid. They quickly enter the nest of the colony and attack everybody and they attack in a way that their self-defense mechanism doesn't work on them. Polyergus ants are the only ants that practices chemical warfare. They release a type of chemical at war that basically makes the enemy's ant go dumb. What's the point of this attack by the polyergus? They're killing everybody. The main point of this attack is the colony's young. They need the babies for work. After the polyergus kills an ant, they take the baby eggs and take it back to their colony. Let's say they take the eggs back to their colony. How do they turn these kids into slaves? You have to know that ants conquered planet Earth around a hundred million years ago and basically took over in every part. And in such a long time, they have perfected, communicated with one another. It's because of the communications that they know everybody in a single colony. They know who's a warrior, who's a worker, who's a builder, or who's the enemy. And most of the communication is done via chemicals and different smells. To make a slave baby by the Formica ants, 
they release a certain smell and the formica is basically fooled to thinking it's one of them and they have to listen whatever they tell them. Scientists basically call this type of mission brainwashing a baby ant. They train the baby in a way that they will sacrifice their life for their work and be a servant until the day they die. Polyergus train these slaves so well that they don't even get food. The slave brings the food and puts it in the polyergus mouth. The formica ant is so brainwashed that if it sees another formica, it would think it's an enemy and it will attack it. Polyergus don't really work, but they're good at one thing. As you know, ants don't live for a few months. That is why they're always looking to find colonies to attack so they can bring new slaves to the colony. So how does a polyergus ant colony shape? These ants don't work, they don't do nothing, they don't even know how to find food. So how is a polyergus queen supposed to start an empire? The polyergus queen is a master of opportunity. It basically begins by finding an ant colony, and it could be any type of ant. The queen enters a colony and immediately releases chemicals and a smell. When the smell reaches the workers and the ants in the colony, they basically get brainwashed once again and they don't know that an intruder has entered their colony. When the queen fools everybody, its goal is to reach the queen of the entire colony and kill that queen and take its place. Usually the polyergus queen will win this battle. After it kills the queen, it rubs itself against the dead queen so it could smell like her. And just by the smell alone, it fools the entire colony. After this, the entire colony knows her as the queen and they bring her food. Usually formica ants have more than one queen in a colony and a polyergus queen cannot defeat colonies that have more than one queen and that's obvious because she's outnumbered. But when a colony has a single queen, it's more of a fair fight and the queen could very easily take over the entire colony by winning a battle. And that basically means what the queen does is enslave the entire colony by killing their queen. So what happens when the polyergus grows up? Nothing, they don't do anything because the slaves are doing everything for them. Only a few of them are turned into scout to go look for other colonies that they could attack for slaving. A very simple yet very smart creature in the universe and when you compare it to other creatures you see how merciless it is you really can't find another animal that it's this merciless and actually has slaves the only living thing that's more merciless than ants is humans and it had slaves itself but not anymore except some places but when you're walking on the ground just know that a world war is taking place underneath your shoes that has been going on for millions of years and it seems like it doesn't want to end anytime soon. World War Ants